Hey everyone, it's Stingley here from Slick Games. Welcome to devlog number 3 for my Metroidvania game. Uh, just before we start, I had some feedback in the last video about audio levels which I have addressed, so hopefully this video is easier to hear. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. It is a bright and breezy Monday morning. Um, I had yesterday off, I wasn't feeling very good, I uh, just sort of ran out of time really and decided to have an early night instead. And so I've got a, a little bit of time before um, my day of work starts. So I have updated my Trello board. I've gone into my player controls and ticked off the uh, various different bits that I've done. I'm sort of questioning whether I'm gonna do these special attacks now. I'm already concerned about scope creep, but I'm gonna leave them for the time being. I've also updated my player sprite animation list uh, with all the ones that I've done and I've dragged in my forest zone into in progress although I wouldn't say that I've actually completed either the map or the tiles yet the tiles are doing okay but I would like to add a little bit more um, variation to them so I'll leave those there for the moment uh, in the in the in progress um, category it is now the evening I have adjusted my pixel art a little bit so that um, I don't repeat the sort of rock pattern in the ground quite so much and uh, I think that looks much better. I've also added um, a couple of additional states into the player, um, one being a double jump like that, so now the player can get up here and the second being a, uh, a dodge, dash dodge type, um, type thing. The dodge is a little bit scuffed at the moment though and uh, yeah so if you are stood next to a solid surface and you try and dodge you kind of instantly teleport into the ground and then you are stuck forever. Uh, so that is uh, the next thing I need to try and fix. This is the code for my new dodge state. It's pretty straightforward um, although it did take me a little while to kind of get it to this point I was trying to use uh, impulses on the uh, sort of forces being enacted on the player as opposed to just interpolating the player's position but um, I, this kind of gives me a better result although obviously with that kind of problem that if I'm stood next to a solid surface I sort of blap straight into the wall um, effectively what it is doing at the moment is when you enter the state it swaps you to the idle animation obviously this will be a dodge animation uh, we stop the player from being able to input, not that I actually take any input in here anyway, so I could probably get rid of that line. Uh, we work out the push direction based on whether the player is facing left or right, and we set the player's velocity to be zero. We then work out where we are going to offset the player to based on the existing position, uh, and we're going to add to it the direction multiplied by the dodge distance, which is set up here as being 50 uh, pixels and we set a timer. Uh, the timer is a sort of a safety net if you like. Uh, I noticed that in certain situations I could get into, if I dodge into a wall that's not, um, you know, not, not into into a wall, but if I sort of dodge and then hit a wall, what was happening was the player would never actually reach their target destination and consequently I would be stuck in the dodge state forever. Uh, that's this line down here. So now I effectively increment the timer and I have a dodge timeout that basically says if I hit this dodge timeout we're going to transition back to idle. If the player isn't on the floor then they transition to air and yeah so the, 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 the bulk of the work here is just done by this line here which is linearly interpolating my position uh, to the target position based on the dodge speed and then this is our little line here for gravity to make sure that we're still stuck to the floor so that this uh, this line here will, will trigger. Um, obviously in this code here we are not taking into account the, the fact that the target position could very well be inside a wall and that could be the case if a player is stood right next to it. It seems to be okay if the player is a little way away from the wall and they dodge uh, because it hits this dodge timeout which is set at a really high amount at the moment it doesn't need to be five seconds but I haven't worked out the actual dodge animation yet once I've worked out the length of the dodge animation I'll just make the dodge timeout whatever the length of that animation is um, but yeah so the, uh, the, but the, the target position if you are stood right next to a wall is effectively you know 
off offsetting you or, or, or misplacing you into that wall and it, and it has a little hissy fit. So I'm going to try and sort that out right now. So what I've just done here is pretty straightforward. I was already trying to detect the left wall and the right wall using my um, wall uh, state. So I've effectively just lifted those uh, those raycasts, that raycast logic, and I stuck it in my dodge um, state. So now, when it's trying to work out what the target position is, it detects to see whether there's a wall right next to you, and if it is, it makes the target position whatever the player position is. Consequently, what happens is the player um, ro well, will roll or, or whatever the animation is, but they'll roll just in, a, in the same position that they are currently in. And I've also noticed that, in actual fact, I probably don't need this line here. I just want to uh, use the dodge timeout, potentially. I'm not sure. I might, I might tweak that, depending on, on, on how it feels once I've actually got the animation in. But yeah, this seems to work okay. So here we go, uh, right next to my wall, and if I press the uh, dodge button, you can see I'm, I'm frozen in place. You can't, well, you can't see I'm frozen in place because I'm frozen in place. But yeah, I'm not being teleported into that wall. Uh, if I run at it and try and dodge, and uh, the same sort of thing happens. I, I sort of slam into the wall, and then I've got this sort of five-second timeout whilst I, whilst whilst the uh, the, the dodge timer is running but I don't crucially teleport into the wall. So I'm classing that as a success. Next up on my list is creating a new tile set for the village or the town area. Um, pretty straightforward one this. Uh, I've sort of added in these sort of block um, sort of paving slab things for the, uh, for the surface and sort of little bricks underneath with a couple of nice little overhangs. And when you look at the actual sort of grid for this, you can see that these are just sort of very small um, two pixel, if you like, tiles. The, the, obviously the ones that are sort of within the, the, the floor themselves are a little bit more complex, but nothing particularly taxing. So I've now worked out in um, LDTK how to sort out a different sort of biome. I have created a town zero map. It's fairly boring but obviously the idea is that there'll be houses and uh, you know signposts and a castle and all that sort of stuff going on here I might have to make this a bit bigger I'll kind of want to have one large town area that the player sort of runs from side to side in although to be fair I might split it out into a couple I'm not sure yet but at the moment I've just got this one um, this one level uh, yeah, so it sits next to Forest Zero, so that's that sort of tall one that we uh, that we have going on there. And here's how that looks in game. So the player will run off to the, uh, the left hand side here and enter the sort of town area. Pretty basic stuff so far, but yeah, the um, my method of putting the top left and bottom right positions and areas and all that sort of stuff works perfectly and uh, yeah it's now Tuesday um, I did a little bit of work last night on creating some pixel art assets for my town area and uh, basically I've got this tower which um, I intend to have as sort of the dungeon that you come out of initially at the start of the game and a couple of items I was unsure whether or not I should um, have the tower with or without sort of bars and portcullis on the window uh, so I dropped this image into the Pixelland discord and got some uh, brilliant feedback so you can see here's my post and I had a little conversation with the man asset Jesus Kenny himself um, he gave me some great feedback and basically suggested that maybe I should try using tiles instead of creating sort of one-off assets um, and you know when a man who's created over 40,000 assets for free for the community gives you advice uh, it's generally a good idea to listen to him so I'm going to try and rework my 
tower specifically into sort of tileable sections so that I can reuse those assets for other things like the castle and maybe even the city walls. It's now the end of my lunch break and I've spent a bit of time working up some new castle tiles. So this is what I've got. These are all individual uh, grid based tiles. Uh, as you can see here they sort of nicely match onto the grid itself. In actual fact if I select it you can see that it's using the same sort of uh, tile set stuff that um, I was using for the other for, for, for the land tiles that I did for the forest and the town. Same kind of idea. Obviously much more complicated so um, I dropped that into Discord and had some brilliant feedback from Kenny again uh, basically saying that uh, I need more detail. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, add some additional stuff to it and he was also making suggestions that I could reuse my lamppost and actually use that as the sort of the dock area. I was originally going to go for a beach but I, I don't think I'm going to have enough time now to make all these assets so yeah I might go for a dock area instead it'll serve the same purpose and then add more detail so I'm going to um, well, I'm going to go to work now and I will have a look at this uh, this evening. So I've dropped those assets into the game now, they look like this, um, not a lot to show here, but I have also worked on a water shader and um, repurposed my lamppost as kind of a, a pier area. So this is a, a new zone added into the game and uh, yeah, like a dock area. Okay, I'm going to call this a video here guys, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a like and consider subscribing to see more from this game series. And I will hopefully see you in the next one.